Hey golfers, and welcome back to the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. This is, is it episode 10? It's episode 10 of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And today we're back with some more tour talk with Pierce Lanou, um, writer of the Sunday Swing, up now on secondswing.com. Had a couple big events this week. Um, the Travelers Championship on the PGA Tour, elevated event. Um, and then we also had the Women's PGA Championship major for them this week. So we'll talk both events. Um, but we are going to start with actually a golf club, which is something on the, in the tour talk kind of segments that we do. We usually don't focus on a singular club model, but we have to talk about the putter that's taking the golf world by storm right now. There it I've is. I've got one in my hand here if you're watching the YouTube version. <laughs> uh, the Odyssey Jailbird Versa. Um, so, and if you're kind of not quite clued in yet, so last week at the US Open, the final pairing on Saturday and Sunday was Wyndham Clark and Ricky Fowler both using a version of the Jailbird Versa. And then this week, Keegan Bradley got hot with the same putter model yeah. and won the Travelers. And then we also had Ricky Fowler putting up a 60 on Saturday with this putter. So, uh, Pierce, this thing, you know, I, I there's a lot to that kind of goes into it. There's a lot of momentum behind it. I mean, what? just tell me what's on your mind with this thing. What comes to mind when you see this putter and you know you, you think about how it's been performing on tour. yeah well it's uh it's on fire right now i mean what it, when was the wells fargo a little over a month ago yeah so that's yeah, that's, right. that's now three wins with that thing on tour in the mm -hmm. last i don't know five six events and uh keegan yesterday i think i think keegan actually played that before yeah long before ricky or Wyndham did mm -hmm. so like keegan kind of was the the original one to use it and uh yeah the thing is is got some kind of magic for right sure. yeah and so this is this one is like currently so i mentioned in the last episode that we briefly talked about it how i remember after the wells fargo championship looking online and seeing us you know probably a handful of uh jailbird versus in our inventory and then i checked after the US Open and magically there was none left yeah. probably because there was a very high level of interest out there for these um, we have since had one here traded in this is the one here so obviously a little used and, and some and beat up to it to some degree but um, I think you're also seeing the putters or the, the players using this model also have a longer putter shaft it's yep. usually closer to 40 inches yep I think 39 is is what yeah. so kind of the uh, counterbalancing type of thing so you mm -hmm. have you have the counterbalancing and you also have um, these stripes black and white stripes on the on the putter face when you look down at the dress um, on the putter head excuse me so and I think that's the key technology of this whole thing is the Versa that's the kind of the name of the putter line but it's the, yeah the visual cue of the black and white stripes, the kind of the contrasting stripes there, um, is supposed to help the golfer more accurately align themselves and their, you know, with the target. So yeah. clearly that's showing itself in the last few weeks uh, yep. on tour as guys are playing really well, putting really well with it. And, uh, you know, supposedly Odyssey has getting a ton of requests to build putters just like Wyndham, Ricky, and Keegan have used. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see where this whole trend, this momentum yeah. goes. Yeah, more and more tour players are <clears throat> are uh, joining the joining mm -hmm. the wave per se. Um, and I, I was kind of messing around with it and rolling a few. And yeah, it just feels just feels really stable, mm -hmm. you know. And we kind of talked about it previously. Like anytime you can get, you know, within eight seven six feet and you know you're not going to miss your line that's that's uh that's a pretty big deal so um and yeah i mean the, the stats speak for themselves keegan bradley was first in putting this week i think mm -hmm. he gained about eight strokes on the greens and i know ricky was up there too and in putt obviously he had that that 10 under round on saturday right. where he was just unconscious mm -hmm. so um yeah it's 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 performing well and then yeah it's it's cool that it's you know almost 10 years old now and it's now kind of surging as mm -hmm. <laughs> like literally the most popular club on the market right like they are they are they're selling for for a good chunk of change right now because there's there's not that many of them out there no there's not and and you know there's you know the, the market on ebay and all these places and and i know um i think odyssey now is going to do like a limited run of them 
Uh, so we'll, we'll be following that. And I, of course, at Second Swing, our team is um, working relentlessly to try to gather yeah. uh, an inventory of, that we can have as well. So stay tuned for that. But um, I think it's just it's fascinating because I'm wondering what's next. The ones that I've seen so far, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen, I've only seen the face balanced kind of the double slant neck, yeah. right? I haven't seen somebody kind of um, use a, uh, you know, basically for an arced putting stroke, right? These have been kind of the face balance models. So I'm curious as to, you know, whether Odyssey will build one for a Tour Pro that's kind of designed for an arc, sort of the way like JT and, and Homa have designed their uh, 5.5 Phantom, yeah. where they've got it, that kind of small slant um, to help with their stroke. I'm wondering if Odyssey will do something similar for the tour pros that mm -hmm. are requesting this because I there's not a ton of players that, in my understanding, is most tour pros arc their putting stroke to some degree. So I wonder how that's going to go and if people are going to get their wish there. Yeah, I, I mean, I would imagine that if if a guy like that wants to wants to try it out, yeah. that Odyssey could could whip something up for him. But um, yeah, I think you're right. I haven't really seen any that aren't the double bend face mm -hmm. balance. I mean. Like there, like you said, there's like the slant neck. I definitely haven't seen any any sort of plumber's neck on that head. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see what this limited run they're gonna do if you know they mm -hmm. they offer any other type of right. type of um, configuration for stroke types and, and and stuff like that. So yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting, and I think they're gonna they're gonna sell really yeah. well <laughs> regardless. I, I so. truly have not. And again, I've been at Second Swing now for almost five years. I have not seen a club get this much type of, this kind of momentum and um, traction and sort of demand really, mm -hmm. especially a club that's almost 10 years old. I yeah. believe 2014 is when this series of putter was originally released. So to see it now kind of gather that speed, that steam again is really cool because mm -hmm. I think it also shows that golfers out there that might be interested in new clubs and they have some really old stuff in the bag, you don't have to get a brand new 2022, 2023 putter or driver yeah. or anything. There's some stuff from 10 plus years ago that can work really well. And it's cool to see tour pros taking advantage mm -hmm. of it too. So um, we just wanted to hit on that because um, obviously as gearheads here at Second Swing, that's, that's something that all of us here in the office, down in the warehouse and all of our stores are just kind of geeking out on right now. Yeah. Is, is this putter so. yeah yeah people want to see it i mean that's the only one in our entire inventory right now so it's right. it's making the rounds today for sure people are checking it out and yeah uh yeah we're pretty excited about it totally so yeah i'm very curious to see how this all unfolds in the next couple months and if we get another winner on tour that uh, uh, i won't be shocked yeah that uses that putter so uh, but in terms of the actual results of the travelers let's start there and then we'll kind of um we'll also discuss the women's pga championship but Keegan Bradley um, wins. He was in a playoff to win this four years ago, I want to say, mm -hmm. with Ches Reeve, who uh, ironically was also in the final group again um, in this event. But Keegan Bradley, uh, the missed cut at the U.S. Open, but all year has been striking it beautifully, which he strikes it beautifully every year. But then when that putter gets hot for him, it's, it's almost routine that he's in contention that week. Yeah. Um, and he's always a guy who can – get hot and go low and he did that mm -hmm. three times in a row yep yeah keegan's one of those players that strikes me as just like really streaky mm -hmm. like he'll he'll have rounds where i mean he had a couple of them this week he goes out there and makes like eight or nine birdies and just <laughs> like yeah. literally doesn't miss a shot and it's just yeah it's really impressive you know when he does that he wins he's now won six times he's a major champion he's won twice this year and he's now top five in the FedEx Cup standings. So he's, yeah, he's going to be a real, a real threat the rest of the year heading into the playoffs as maybe kind of an underdog type player that mm -hmm. could, you know, that could, that could win the, the whole thing. So um, it's going to be interesting to see kind of how he, he closes the season. I think he's playing again this next week um, at uh, the Rocket Mortgage. Yep. And that's another course that's probably going to fit his game pretty well. Um, and, and Ricky Fowler's playing too. So it'll yeah. be fun to watch the Jailbirds again. That's right. And yeah, um, yeah Keegan, man, when that putter, like you said, when that putter's rolling, it's, 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 rolling, it's rolling good. Right, so. and, and that's where the, uh, there's so many guys on tour that maybe fit that description of 
really, I mean, it's kind of almost Scotty Scheffler light where mm -hmm. the ball striking is really consistent and typically they're going to gain strokes on the field when it comes to off the tee approach and even short game. Um, and I think with Keegan, it's more specifically the off the tee and approach. Yep, he and, led the field in approach this yeah. week as well. So first then, in approach, first in putting, that's a pretty And then pretty for lethal. him, the putter has been pretty streaky his career. I yep. think that's kind of where this, the streakiness comes from is the putting is off and on. But when he is on with the putter, it's almost a guarantee that he's in contention. Mm -hmm. And so in a week like this when he leads the field, doesn't surprise anybody that he wins the tournament. Yeah, yeah, he was kind of just in, I mean, Sunday he started out, I think he birdied three of his first six holes, and from there he was kind of just cruising. Right, and that's control. when, I mean, in theory you're protecting a lead, but he's yeah. just out there making birdies. Yeah, so. yeah, you'd think, you'd think he might have shown a little more, I don't know, not conservativeness, but yeah, he was just hitting, hitting it at the flag and making putts, and um, I think he made a few late bogeys, but at that point it was. It doesn't even matter. He, he still won by, by still won by three, and he bogeyed right. I think three of the last six holes or something. So it's, yeah, that's that's impressive yeah. to do in a, in a designated event, mm -hmm. might I add, with you know the best field you can you can probably have. Right. So I'm curious too, moving forward on Ryder Cup, if mm -hmm. Bradley becomes. I guess I don't know where the points are. He's yeah. probably worked his way up there to being. He's got to be close. At least a very. Strong consideration yeah. for a captain's pick. Yeah, the Ryder um, Cup conversation so. for the U.S. team is starting to get really interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of names that, well, I'll put it this way. There's going to be probably four or five names that you're like, how is that guy not on the Ryder yep, Cup team? exactly. But uh, you're going to see the roster itself, and you're going to start to understand yeah. a little bit why. Just so, I mean, it says a lot about the, the quality of players that, um, you know, play for the American team um, in the game right now. and. Yeah, the fact that probably there's going to be probably, like you said, four or five guys that are top 30 in the world mm -hmm. that miss out on that opportunity. Yep. It's it's going to be pretty interesting to see kind of how right. that roster comes and together. And even here. one is Ricky Fowler, who we yeah. kind of talked this week a little bit because rebounding off of the, the tough round and the final round of the U.S. Open um, comes back and another strong showing. I think now what is it like? nine out of 10 or 10 out of 11 events, he's finished top 20 or something like that. Yep. Um, and then a 60, obviously, on Saturday. Um, he's another one with the Ryder Cup that I don't think he's going to be quite there on points alone to get in that top six and have an automatic spot. But I have to imagine for a captain's pick, he's going to be a strong consideration mm -hmm. too, given how solid and consistent and especially you know, the form he's in leading up to the Ryder Cup this fall. Yeah, if he continues to play the way he's been playing the last six months, I don't, it's going to be hard to make a case against him being on that team. And there's a, there's a handful of tournaments coming up here that I think, well, it's just, I just, I think he's going to win one of these, these next few, mm -hmm. whether it's this week or, um, I don't even know if he's playing the 3M. I know he did last year, but that's another course that, mm -hmm. that fits his game. And, and it'll be, it'll be, uh, entertaining to see how he does at the, the final major of the year. Right. over at uh, Hoy Lake so yeah which he has um, finished top five there yep. before so. Yep. so yeah I I would love to see Ricky on the on the Ryder Cup team I think mm -hmm. I think uh, all the fans would but oh yeah you know obviously it's it's out of our hands he's gonna right. he's gonna have to continue to play well for sure if he wants to wants to earn that spot but I think, yeah. I think he's got a good shot at it yeah so let's kind of let's go to some of these bigger names that didn't win the tournament but certainly were kind of in the conversation throughout the week um, I'll kind of let you pick the one you want to sort of um, go over and discuss a little bit. Scotty Scheffler, Justin Thomas, Rory McIlroy. Pick one. Yeah. Uh, well, Scotty Scheffler, uh, broken record again. Yeah. Top five. That's now six starts in a row where Scotty has finished in the top five or better. Is, that's just 18 stupid. in a row in the top 12. And yeah, he he just goes out there and and makes birdies and gives himself a chance yeah. every single week. It's the, the floor is crazy. I mean, where he, he has not his A game, probably not even his B game, but he's going to just scrape out a top five out mm -hmm. of the deal, um, which is scary to think about because, and we've talked about the putting, and the putting wasn't so bad this week, but all 
there's always one phase of his game that's just not quite there that week. But the other three phases, for, per se, are elite. Right? Yeah. And if he can just get all four in sync one week, he's going to win kind of like at the players. He's going to win by five or six shots. Yeah, and I swear he holds out more than anyone yeah. on tour. Like, every week he's holding out from... Somewhere. Outside of 150 yards, it seems like. Or 200 yards at the it's like, US it's like, Open. I feel know. like Jordan Spieth kind of had a stretch like that where he was just holding out from everywhere, greenside bunkers, fairways, hole-in-ones. I mean, it's kind of that's kind of Scotty right now. And um, yeah, You mentioned Rory, too, who had his first uh, career PGA Tour hole-in-one yep, this I week. Saw that, that which pretty, I couldn't believe that. I, I know. Like, how they, has he had never made one? They showed that, and I was like, really? That's his first one on yeah. tour? But. Um, yeah, Rory kind of just another, I mean, another week for him, same thing. He didn't really have his A game, but, you know, is playing obviously solid enough to, to put mm. himself in position to have a chance. Um, I think he ended up finishing outside the top 10. Is that right? This yeah, week? I mean, I think, so he was, it's kind of, it's a, it's a trend for him where, you know, he can't put together all four rounds. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I know this is we're we're talking about a different standard of PGA Tour Pro right. Rory versus anybody else, but like it's disappointing to see Rory in this. It goes for majors too, where it's always like one or maybe even one round or maybe even twenty seven holes where he's just not getting it done. Yeah, he's, he's struggling. He's over par. He can't quite make the birdie putts, whatever it might be. But then the rest of the the tournament for him, he's just dominating. Mm-hmm. And to try to put that together and keep the pedal down for all seventy two holes seems to be a bit of a hurdle for him right now because clearly he has when he's on right those days where he's on he's nobody's going to be better than him um but it's just there's always a round or a round and a half where he just kind of lets up a little bit and that's where the field catches him and surpasses him Mm -hmm. yeah and at a course like this this week where you know players are shooting six seven under Mm -hmm. every day you you've got to keep keep your foot on the gas if you're gonna if you're gonna compete i mean if you're out there shooting two or three under you're you're losing ground on the field in a tournament like this so yeah i mean for whatever reason like you said he just hasn't been able to put four rounds together um and i think kind of similar to shuffler if if he is able to do that one of these weeks he's i think he's gonna win by a wide margin but um it just it hasn't happened for him yet this season so right um, Justin Thomas is the other one we should we should cover mm-hmm. here um, because that was certainly a su- surprise to many. I know his game has not been that great lately, yeah. and um, it kind of you know culminated with an 81 in the second round of the U.S. Open, yeah. which I don't I don't think there was a higher score than that all week in in the event. There may yeah, have been throughout I, the weekend, but I know up to that point there wasn't anything that mm-hmm. was higher I can't than 81. Think of one, but so. Clearly, the game was struggling, and actually, this week he rebounded nicely. A um, couple low rounds there. I think he had a 62 Saturday kind yep, of heat. Nice heat. bounce back. For it went really week. low, and then he also it was his best week on approach throughout the entire season. So, mm-hmm. um, some positive signs there were the approach game had been lacking yeah. leading up to this, and to see him throw a few darts um, and kind of gain those stra- shots back is a huge positive sign for the JT fans. Yeah, and that's the approach game is typically where JT kind of like almost laps the field. Oh yeah. In like tournaments where he wins, like if you think of like the players a couple of mm-hmm. years ago, like JT was hitting every iron shot, whether it was 230 yards or 100 yards, it was like every shot he hit was mm-hmm. within 10 feet. And yeah, for whatever reason this year, the ball striking hasn't quite been there, and it was good to see. It was good to see this week. He kind of maybe turned a corner in that aspect so yeah um yeah it'll be it'll be interesting i mean he's got one more chance at a major this year and i don't think he's historically played the open no. well but the opens of course were or a course a tournament where you've got to strike it well so if yeah if he's kind of trending in that direction he might be a might be an interesting one to keep an eye on yeah he hasn't it is surprising that, that he hasn't been mm-hmm. awesome in Open championships yeah. because of of all of the tournaments, that's the one that kind of demands the most creativity and right. sort of shot making. Yeah, you see a lot of um, those like low stinger yes. iron shots, and that's that where run he up. thrives. Right, and you know, bending those hooks around trees mm-hmm. or um, you know, flighting the ball a certain way that most players can't do. So 
I, I mean, at some point, I think he'll figure that out. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's this one. Um, and of course, to, you know, the lag putting and stuff might be where he falls behind. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of these kind of more experienced players lag putt really well, and that's huge when you play these greens at, um, at opens where they're massive, and or you're putting from way off the green mm-hmm. and slopes. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's got uh, the ball striking. I, I think is back, or at least the iron play is back. Mm-hmm. So. Hopefully that continues to pick up the trend for him. But uh, another good week. I mean, the the Travelers atmosphere watching on TV that was awesome. Yeah. Was, the crowd up there loves that event. Uh, they they will ride or die for that yeah. for that event and that course. Yeah. And when you have a when you have a hometown guy kind of leading mm-hmm. the way, that's that's gonna help too for sure. The fans, I think, were were super excited for for Keegan, and you know he's been very vocal about you know how much that tournament means to him and, and how much he wanted to win that one. So. Um, yeah, you, you could kind of see the just the sheer excitement on, mm-hmm. uh, on the 18th green on Sunday yeah. when he when he finished out there. Um, yeah, and I mean to have his, his family there, his kids there, cool moment for him. Right. Yeah, and I saw the also the kids got their own little trophy yeah. too. So yeah. Uh, yeah, great event there. And then of course we got to talk a little bit about the women's PGA Championship. And so um, you know, first of all, the, the eyes were on Rose saying we could start there. I know she didn't win the event, yeah. but um, actually another 20-year-old phenom won the event, too. Yeah. We should cover that. But Rose, uh, she was by pegged by many as a, as a favorite, one of the favorites, and that's kind of what happens when you're the world number one amateur and then you win your first pro event. But um, I think a, a one sloppy day may have caught or cost her you know, the chance, and then kind of down the stretch Sunday when she was right there, made a couple mistakes but yeah it's still a really solid I mean debut in, in a major yeah I mean it's so hard to live up to that that hype especially you know this is her first major mm-hmm. to come in and almost be expected to if not win contend and for her to do that just yeah it speaks volumes I mean obviously we saw that that she can she can do it she won in her debut a couple of weeks ago but you know major championships are a different ball game mm-hmm. and um for her i think she started sunday six shots behind the lead yeah and you know at one point she was within one i think she had it to five under after yeah. 11 or 12 holes and was really i mean really threatening yeah threatening the lead so obviously ended up coming up a couple shots short i think she finished t8 yeah um hit gonna... it in the water off the tee on the, the 18th which kind of mm-hmm kind of did it for right but um a lot of players hit the water off the 18th tee yesterday um because we had the spaniard i think Mm -hmm. it's carlota Mm -hmm. saganda she was coming through kind of earlier and she had she had a putt at at 63 which would have i think tied the lowest round in in pga championship history for the women Um, but yeah she found the water ended up you know making five there and coming up a couple short as well. But. Which, that would have been a spectacular way to oh, win a major, yeah. you know, shooting a record and yep. and coming from behind by that far. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I think there's something about, because you mentioned it in the Sunday Swing, like how the attention in terms of the the young phenom was, on, was Rose Zhang, and rightfully so, right? I mean, she won, you know, hit basically every amateur event she stepped on the course for. And... You know, then won her first pro event, and it was fair to put the spotlight on her. But, yeah. Um, to see, was it Ru- Roning? Roning? Is that yeah, I, I kind of heard, I kind of hear, yeah, something like that. Roning Yin. Roning Yin. Chinese player, uh, um, also 20 years 20 old. 20 years old. Yeah. And to see her close off the win the way she did was, you know, because it seemed like, like you mentioned, a lot of players were stumbling or, you know, kind of maybe not quite fully committing to shots mm-hmm. on 18 there. And then she just, uh, knocks in the birdie yep. and kind of slams the door, as you said. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that was an impressive way to win at 20 years old. Yeah, yeah, and that's I mean, she's now a two-time winner. She mm-hmm. won earlier this year, um, and obviously, you know, like you said, you know, Rose Zhang was kind of the big story, but I don't think people realize that, you know, Yin was also 20 years old and now is just second. Chinese player to win a, a, a major championship on the LPGA tour. So yeah, hats off to her. Super impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought was kind of a funny story was 
um, the other Chinese player that was contending, I think it's Ji Yu Lin. Yeah. Um, those two are actually roommates. I think Ji Yu owns That's, the house and yeah. Royan rents from her. And I saw I saw like a post round interview and, and she was like, Well, you know, you just made a one point five million dollars. Are you gonna you know, you're gonna buy a house now? She's like, I think I might just buy Ji Yu's house. <laughs> Well, that now was, that you have the major, yeah, I suppose was, you probably could. That was pretty funny. And supposedly they have, they've been having some plumbing issues. So they're oh, like, wow. oh, you should be able to afford yeah, the best yeah. plumber now. So, <laughs> right. yeah, it's kind of just a cool story. Super good for um, for the women's game. Yeah, and, it is. It's really cool. And it's it's cool just to see over the years how that how the women's game especially has become so international. And, yeah, and they just um, keep getting younger and younger, yep. it seems. Which the men's is kind of the same way, but it's like, it seems like, a lot of these women that are winning are like under 21, 22 years old consistently. It's it's really impressive. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I mean, it's you always talk leading up to like a men's major. It's all it, you, there's so much discussion about experience and you know how to play the course and the management mm-hmm. stuff. But then now you have 20 year olds winning um, in their debut on mm-hmm. on the LPGA tour, like Rose did, and now you have Yin winning in her. 20, uh, 20 years old yeah. winning a PGA championship. So, uh, yeah, those, I mean, what an exciting finish for that event. You don't see, cause like you mentioned, that leaderboard was so jumbled up. Yeah. And even throughout Sunday, there was several, several names that could have won that, that trophy. At yeah. The end of the day. Yeah. It was, it was a, it was an exciting finish for sure. I, I flipped to that from the travelers probably yeah. with about an hour left and just, just kept it on. And it was, it was great. It was, Everything you could ask for. I mean, you had you also had Yuka Sasso, mm-hmm. Japanese player who's won a major before. Yep. She was right there. They kind of had they had like a two hour rain delay, and when they came back out onto the course, Sasso kind of whatever whatever she did in the rain delay was was the right thing because I think she made like four or five birdies and and at one point had a share of the lead there yeah. coming down the stretch and you know Yin just needed the birdie at eighteen to. Yeah. To win it was like right one of those Sundays where, and it happens sometimes on like the PGA Tour and majors on the men's side, where there's like too many names that are like right there that mm-hmm. like the broadcast can't really keep up. Yeah, there's so much going on. Uh huh. Uh, which it's always as a viewer that's yeah, great. That's and then, all but you then can sometimes ask for, like yeah. miss a shot or two, and you can't really blame the broadcast because no. there's, there's so much going on. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, you know this player just made a birdie. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, a moment okay. ago, this leader player just tied for the lead. Yeah. Uh, so. But yeah, that's that's great for the game and um, uh, some great golf over the weekend for mm-hmm. sure. So uh, for more, you can read the Sunday Swing. Um, that's always up every Monday at SecondSwing.com. Uh, Pierce recaps the action from the weekend, and then of course leading up to the Open Championship, we'll have a little bit more coverage of that as well and and players to watch, and yeah. et cetera. So, but Pierce, thanks for joining. Mm-hmm. Uh, another solid episode of the Yeah, Tour really Talk. fun one this week, for and, sure. Uh, we encourage people listening and watching to keep following Second Swing on social media or visiting our website for, uh, you know, potentially some more information on these jailbird versus yeah. putters. We're trying what we, doing what we can to get some in. Yep. Uh, but uh, we know the, the, you know, the steam behind these things is pretty real. So look for that. But Pierce, thanks again. Yep. Thanks for having me.